So the curse of the De Vasconcellos is lifted? Oh, no. The Countess was thrilled to find the lost chalice. But there's still the riddle of the missing knight. Well, you can forget about that now and get back to finding the Templar's secret. Uh, actually, I promised the Countess I'd find Don Carlos. You what? I can explain everything. You have got the odds for a withered old Spanish aristocrat? The Countess entrusted me with the chalice and the quest for her ancestor's tomb. You're as crazy as she is. Haven't you got enough problems? Khan and the Templars? It's all part of the same thing. The chalice is important, I'm sure. The manuscript pointed us to the knight, and I have to find him. What then? I don't know. But when the knight and the chalice are reunited, maybe I will. Is there something going on between you and Labano? What business is it of yours? We agreed all this. The clown, the Templar, strictly business, remember? Yeah, but... So get off my case! This is the chalice I discovered in Spain. I still can't figure out why the Countess gave it to you. After losing it for all those years, she simply gave it away to a total stranger. She's one prawn shot of a paella. The Countess is a fine lady. You shouldn't compare her with seafood. I wouldn't be surprised if there's something going on between you and that Countess. Are you serious? She's old enough to be my grandmother. At least this version makes them out to be as bad as each other. Have you any idea what this lens might be used for? As a magnifying glass, obviously. I'd better get back to the quest. Let's go and find Don Carlos. Hello again. You're back. Me, oui, I have returned. Well, I wasn't expecting to see you back here again. No? Well, it is a strange thing, but I am here on duty. On duty? But you're just sitting there drinking wine. No, I am not just drinking wine. I am under cover. I must be missing something. You're in uniform. Precisely, monsieur. My cover is that of an indolent, wine-guzzling police officer. You've got me convinced. Merci. But in re reality, my every muscle is poised, every nerve honed. I am drawn tight, ready to pounce. Pazang! Who or what were you planning to pazang on? You must have heard, m monsieur of the terror that is gripping Paris. You mean the killings? Oh, at last, someone's taken action. <laughs> People die every day. No, no, I am on the trail of Sewer Jacques. I, uh... Who? Sewer Jacques, the terror of the Septuagint city. He pops up here, he pops up there. The cops, they seek him everywhere. Is he so harsh or beneath the neck? That damned elusive Sir Jack. Bravo, that's very good. Merci. I was up half the night writing that. Who is this Sewer Jacques character anyway? Ah, if we but knew that, we could have him in custody in an hour. But he is cunning to despoil the sewers of our fair city, he has c committed many deceptions. He has pretended to be a police officer and deluded a poor war veteran. Uh-oh. He has pretended to be a jongleur. Wow, is that the time? And an American tourist. What nationality are you, monsieur? Canadian. Well, uh, gotta go now. See ya. Well, it's not everyone who can say they started an urban myth. Let's go before he decides to pazang. Is he that drunk that he can't remember us performing our little trick over here? Hello again, father. 
Bonjour, monsieur. How pleasant to speak to you again. Is the right hand window original? Oui, monsieur. Have you ever seen anything like this lens? No, never. The glass seems subtly colored in some way. Yeah, I've never noticed that before. What do you make of this chalice? It uh, certainly looks very old. About as old as this church, I think. There seems to be an engraving on it. Yeah? What does it say? I do not know. It is very tarnished. With your permission, uh, I could try polishing it. Uh, I promise I will be very careful. Nothing exciting happens if we say no. So let's just let him polish our chalice. That'd be very good of you. This uh, shouldn't take very long. Feel free to look around. Okay, thanks. The lens fitted into the end of the scroll like a hand into a glove. Per disciplinum meum lux vedebus. Hey! Welcome to another mini game that makes no logical sense. We have to manipulate these lens elements to form a picture, well, a coherent picture. But this is a 700 year old statue and a 700 year old lens. So what is going on with this? Now the easiest way to solve this puzzle is we have this brown banner at the bottom here. So let's bring these in line. And the third one, the easiest option I've found is to align the fist in the top left. The distortions came sharply into focus. It was a knight templar burning at the stake. And below him a date in Roman numerals. A knight templar burning at the stake and a date. Let me see. M C C C X I V. That's 1314. Hey, thanks. It is my pleasure, monsieur. What was the writing on the chalice? It was not writing. Uh, my mistake. It was a coat of arms. The remarkable thing is that it seems very familiar. Yeah? Oui, I think I have seen it on that wool tomb in the far corner. That winged horse is quite distinctive. Did you know that the center window conceals an image of a man burning at the stake? The burning man? What, you knew? That there was a hidden image? No. But the church has a reputation for being haunted. Many times people have claimed to have seen a burning man in the window. But when others they look, there is nothing. Perhaps the light has to be just so for the figure to appear. Yeah, or maybe you need a special lens. Do you speak Latin? You ask this of a priest? Okay, can you tell me what per disciplinum meum lux vedebus means? Let me see. That would be uh, by my teachings you will see the light. I think. Yeah, that's what I thought too. Boy, what a shine you got on this! Merci. It is all in the wrist action. I bet it is. Catch you later. Au revoir, monsieur. Let's go and check out this tomb. Now that my attention had been drawn to it, there was no mistake. There was no name on it. But the coat of arms was undeniably the Pegasus of the De Vasconcellos family. I'd found the last resting place of Don Carlos. 
My eye was drawn to the biblical references carved into the edge of the tomb. Hey, maybe these biblical references mean something. This puzzle is akin to a word search, which, again, logically speaking, for this era, probably doesn't make much sense. We need to find Bible references. Which could be very easy for some people. But what if you don't know any Bible references? So we need to highlight the book, chapter and verses. For example, Psalms 12. Sorry, no, that's 22 to 21. Psalms 22, 21. Not much to go on, but it must have meant something. If I examine the tomb more closely, there might be other clues to find. Psalms 32 and 7? Psalms 32, 7. The numbers refer to a chapter and a verse in the Bible. Corinthians 4 and 5. Corinthians 14, 5. 14 and 5, so, sorry. And John 4 and 11. John 4 and 11. There were no more references to find. But a series of Roman numerals ran around the plaque. I made a note in case they meant something. Psalms 32, 7. John 4, 11. Corinthians 1, 4, 5. And just one more. Psalms 22, 21. I may not be perfect, but I've got a memory like a steel trap. The chalice had led me to these inscriptions, but it looked like a happy coincidence to me. After all, the de Vasconcellos arms were already on the manuscript. Nope, I was still convinced that the chalice had some significance all of its own. I do kind of know my Roman numerals, but under pressure, I kind of fell apart a little bit, little bit there. Now let's speak to the expert, Mr. Lobino. Who George seems to see as a rival right now. Hi, Andre. Hello, Georgie. Uh, no. Why not? I'm sure he would be very interested in seeing this right now. While I was in Syria, I discovered a strange pagan statue. It was like a head with three bearded faces. Horrible. That sounds as if it could be Baphomet, the idol described by the Templars. The poor Knights of Christ had an idol that looked like that? Allegedly. The description of the idol came from the evidence extracted by the Inquisition. Mind you, not one statue or idol was ever found on Templar property. Until now, that is. Just last month, a statue of Baphomet was unearthed right here in Paris. Where? At the Institut Hermétique de Naval. The statue is beneath the foundations. It was discovered by some workmen while renovating the building. Can you tell me any more about the statue of Baphomet? It's a fearful image, even now. A bearded head. The base of the statue is carved with Templar symbols. One of the workmen noticed a curious stain at the base. He claimed it looked like blood. Blood? That's right. Thanks for your help, Andre. You're welcome. Thanks, Andre. I guess that we should check it out. The painter didn't seem to regard the painting as too important. Not as important as a cigarette break, anyway. I used to smoke. I know how important that break is. Excuse me, could you help me? What is it? I've got a few questions. 
I have some plaster of Paris. Amazing. Why, thank you, sir. Have you seen this man before? Yes, he asked me a lot of questions, just like you. And what kind of questions did he ask? Have you ever seen anything like this? Yes, it's a communion chalice. I know, you know, I used to be an altar boy. You? Yes, me. What's so funny about that? Uh, nothing. A greasy tissue. Don't get it too close to my cigarette, monsieur, or there'll be a conflagration. I was pretty sure the shaken shock had shot its bolt in Syria. I've got a sewer key. Yeah, I used to work in the sewer. Oh? What happened? I had a cigarette break in a pocket of methane. A mano cover landed on the other side of the Seine and I was sacked. Has a guy calling himself Merlin been nosing around? Was he wearing a t-shirt with my name is Merlin on it? I doubt it. Then how the hell am I supposed to know his name just by looking at him? Huh? You're doing a fine job. Merci. I have my professional pride. I don't think I've ever seen a Galois smoke so stylishly. It's a natural talent. I'm being sarcastic. I'm being indifferent. You're very good at that as well. Merci. Vive l'indifférence. So, what are you doing here? I am having my break. Yeah, I mean, when you finish your break. Oh, when I finish my break? An interesting concept, monsieur. You'll probably need to think about it. I could have another cigarette while I consider. Perhaps tomorrow too? Okay, let me put things differently. What were you hired to do here? I was hired to keep the archaeological dig in the basement of this building clear of debris and to touch up damage to the door frames with my little pot of paint. It's a very responsible job. Unfortunately, I'm not a very responsible person. So what do you know about the excavation? I know they won't let me in to do my job. I would complain to my union, but tell uh, You couldn't be bothered to join. Right. Tell you what, though. I'm surprised at the sort of people interested in this uh, excavation. What's unusual about the visitors to the excavation? <laughs> None of them look like archaeologists to me. Do you know what an archaeologist looks like? Sweepy suits, crocodile-eyed attaché cases, Rolex oyster. But no archaeologist dresses like that. Quite right, monsieur, quite right. So, who are they? Who cares as long as they pay me? What does the word Templar suggest to you? Templar? Mm. Nothing. Nothing. Be seeing you. Au revoir, monsieur. There was a dumpster full of debris from the excavation, I guessed. Hey, you! Get away from my dumpster. Okay. The painter had a pot of gunmetal gray primer hanging from the barrier. Hey, monsieur, get away from my paint pot. Okay. I should think so. Meddling with a man's paint pot. Puh. If you let me meddle with your paint pot, I'll let you meddle with my chalice. A guard stood by a door I guessed led to the excavation. He looked pretty pompous. Well, not so much pretty, just pompous. Hi? Uh, excuse me? Oui? I got this plaster from Ireland. Not an exciting souvenir. Have you seen this man before? Oh, <gasps> you have? Uh, no. Uh, oui? I've got... I thought better of showing him the chalice. He might be on the conspiracy's payroll, and I didn't want to risk it. Oui? You have... A sudden urge to sing. Care to join me? No. No singing in here. Look. A tissue stained with grease paint. Ah, just what I've always wanted. If you give me that, you can enter through the door. Really? Of course not. What would I want with an old tissue? Uh, no. This gadget is a sewer key. So it is. Do you recognize this name? Merlin. No. So, what exactly are you doing here? 
I'm guarding. You expect to find me shearing sheep? Take it easy. I just didn't realize you were a guard. I'd like to know what you're guarding, please. That's a secret. It wouldn't happen to be an archaeological site, would it? Are you asking me or telling me? I'm telling you. Then why ask? I had a feeling this was no normal hole in the ground. What do you know about the Knights Templar? There was a long pause during which the guard said nothing. Then he said, Nothing. Nothing at all? Is this a test? What, like a history pop test? No, like a test. Okay, yes, it's a test. Then I know absolutely nothing about the Templars. Wrong choice, George. The guard was being amazingly evasive. It was going to take more than goodwill to get past him. Talk to you later. Au revoir, monsieur. There was a closed door with toilet scratched into the cheap veneer. That door's locked, monsieur. There was a telephone on the far wall. A thermostat was mounted over a radiator. The radiator was pumping out heat as the thermostat was cranked right over to full. No wonder it was warm in here, even with the door open to the chill of fall. I couldn't imagine what I'd achieved by turning the dial. The doorway was full of assorted old tea chests, cardboard boxes, and so on. All empty and all uninteresting. The doorway led to an old utility closet that had lost its door. There was nothing interesting in there. I couldn't see any use for a collection of dirt and half bricks. Hi again. What is it? It sure is hot in here. I have to have the door open to allow the workmen access, so why not? I turn the heat up. You could wrap up warm. I have my gloves if it gets cold, but why bother when it's warm anyway? I'd like to use the washroom, but the door's locked. Oh, that's no problem. You can have the key. Thanks. It's not stop George doing nonsensical things just for the sake of doing them. So I'm not sure why it stopped him before now. I turned the heating off. As I'd hoped, the guard put his gloves on. That was a very fast-acting uh, heating system. I didn't want any coal. What was that? You don't want any coal? The thing felt really hot. Big demands seemed to be being made on it. Being in a charming comfort station like this made me think fondly of the toilet in Syria. That place was kept in pretty good order. At least, it had been until I vandalized it. Still, it was all for a good cause. On the wall was an automatic hand dryer. I wasn't about to wash my hands in this place, so I didn't need to dry them. Oh boy! Dirty soap! How do they do that? I smell a puzzle right now. And why does this look like a potato? Oh boy! Dirty soap! How do they do that? On the wall was an automatic hand dryer. The taps were rusty. Oh boy! The cold taps washer looked to have failed. It was just dribbling down the sink. What we need to do right now is make a copy of the key to the excavation site. That's step one. Step two is distracting the guard. So we make a copy of the key by imprinting it into the soap. Perhaps I could make a copy of the key. The key had made a clear imprint in the soap. The bar of soap had the imprint of a key in it. Yes, we can see that. The bar of soap had the imprint of a key in it. 
Right. I knew keeping that plaster was a good idea. With the plaster and the imprint, I was on the right lines. I had filled the key's imprint in the soap with dry plaster. I had filled the key's imprint in the soap with dry plaster. Okay, thank you for clarifying that. You can't make a cast without wetting the plaster. But wet plaster alone does not make a cast. The key's imprint was now filled with wet plaster. I used the dryer to speed up the process. Well, it had taken a while, but I had made myself a completely unconvincing plaster key. Way too fragile to use in a lock. I'd have to substitute it for the real one. Trouble was, it looked like plaster and not metal. Then again, that plaster statue in Syria hadn't looked like stone until I'd been a bit artful with it. Maybe I could improve the key as well. Hang on, we've just put the soap back. I didn't need to use the soap again. Surely the next person who comes along will notice a key-shaped hole in it. It was my plaster copy of the excavation key. Trouble was, it looked like plaster, and it felt like plaster. So let's go and make it look like gunmetal. Hey, monsieur, don't go with my keys. Hey, I'm just standing here. Hi again. What is it? Here's the keys. Thanks. Merci, monsieur. Talk to you later. Au revoir, monsieur. We need a way to distract this gentleman just here. Even though we know that he won't let us near his paint pot, we still have to do this specific action right here. Hey, monsieur, get away from my paint pot. Okay. I should think so. Meddling with a man's paint pot. Puh. And now we can call up an old friend who can help us out. Do you mind if I use the phone? Be my guest. I'm paid to guard this door. The phone can look after itself. Kular. Hello, Nico. It's me. Hi, Georges. What's happening? I'm at the excavation, but they won't let me in. Damn. We need to know what's in there. Don't worry. I've got a scheme. I'm going to need your help, though. Okay. What do you want me to do? I want you to keep somebody on the phone for a while. Who? A painter. I need to get at his pot. Oh, okay. Stay on the line. I'll go and get him. Hi, it's me again. What now? I made this key out of plaster. How oh, thrilling. How oh, clever. Now, pointless. You've got a phone call. For me? Are you certain? It's a woman. She sounded hot. What woman? She must be mistaken, monsieur. Well, she asked for that hunk of a man with the nicotine fingers and his ass hanging out of his pants. Certainly sounds like me. Stand back. It wouldn't do to keep the lady from uh, her hunk. Go get some tiger. It looked, like, it looked like George tipped his whole hand in there. To well, monsieur, what a strange woman. She was all over me and then suddenly, nothing but abuse. Really? Why, abuse. Ah well. I have a cigarette to finish. And monsieur, if she calls again, I am not available. Hi again. What is it? 
Uh, no. I need to use the, uh, the toilet again. Again? Already? I have this problem. <laughs> How technical do you want me to get? Hmm, never mind. Here's the key. Now, I'd substituted the fake key for the excavation key. It looked okay, but felt false. And we did that right in front of his face. And for some reason, the key is brass and not silver as before. It was the key to the excavation. Hi again. What is it? I held my breath and hoped that he wouldn't notice the substitution. Here's the keys. Uh, thanks. Merci, monsieur. After the amount of trouble I'd been through to get that key, I wasn't about to share with the guard how clever I'd been. Talk to you later. Au revoir, monsieur. Now it's time to call in another favor from Nicole. Hi, Nico. It's me again. I'd guessed. What do you want this time? What did you say to the painter? I shan't repeat it, Josh. Look, I need to get the guard out of the way. Could you call back and ask him to get the painter again? Okay, I'll call back soon. This looked like a good place to watch things develop. Hey, you! It's the phone! Yeah, who is it? How should I know? What am I? Your social secretary? It's not a chick, is it? Yes, it's a woman. Are you going to answer it? Does she have a warm, sensual voice like molten chocolate? Yes, yes, she has a really sexy voice. Now get a move on! I'm not talking to her. I can see that. You're wasting time talking to me. No, you don't understand. I refuse to talk to her. You refuse? You refuse? I'm wasting valuable time. Don't make me laugh. Your time valuable? You just stand around all day. I have a highly responsible job. Pa, don't pa me, you elephantine oaf. My job is important. Impossible. They would have hired somebody competent in that case. Meaning what? Instead of which they hired a dismal rent a cop like you. All epaulette and no brains. Why you? This looked set to carry on for some time. It was too good an opportunity to miss. The guard was telling the painter there was a call for him. And the painter wasn't believing a word of it. Looked like he had enough problems without me interfering. I couldn't see anything useful to do with the planks. Uh, no, thanks. I think I'm carrying enough junk. Wow. A dead body is now junk? It seems like there's some head trauma in their skeletons. Well, skull, not skeleton. There was no doubt about it. It was the same sort of idol I'd seen in Syria. Baphomet. The Templars had certainly been through here. Close up, the pattern didn't make any sort of sense. It fanned out around an axis point, a kind of focus to one side. Well, I was going to say skeleton's head, but... Recording seems to make me lose some brain cells. Right, this chalice should hopefully be useful right now. And there it was, decoded by the curves of the chalice, the image of a church. I found out what the chalice was for. You've solved the puzzle? Yeah, 
there was a distorted picture at the Baphomet site. When I viewed it in the polished surface of the chalice, it changed. What did it show? A picture of a church with a square tower. Just how long have you known Labano? André, we met at college. He helped me out when I was a fresh air. Showed me around, that sort of thing. You never told me that before. I thought he was just a... a working acquaintance. So he is. I rarely see him these days. You know, he hasn't changed much. A little less air at the front, perhaps. I'd forgotten how much fun he could be. All right, George, drop it. Look at the chalice now, Nico. What happened? It's shiny. The priest at Montfaucon buffed it up for me. That's incredible. Yeah, looks as good as new. No, you found a use for a priest. That's incredible. Uh, that is not a good idea. Why not? I guess I'd better return the chalice to the Countess. Hurry back, Georges. Okay, let's go and make an old lady very happy.